Alrighty, well, let's see. Um, <coughs> it's Wednesday morning. Just having a coffee before I go down. I've got about half an hour. Um, I'm waiting for the curse of Janolan to hit. I mean, apart from having to quit my job. Um, the only other thing that's happened is I haven't lost my key card, haven't lost a modem or anything like that. Making me a bit paranoid. But I did plug this thing in overnight. It didn't charge up. So, <clears throat> I've got this plugged into the wall. And I'm just sitting here having a coffee, waiting for the coach. I thought I'd have a, at least a couple of minutes of charge time on this bloody thing so I could at least take some snaps out of the coach or once I get down to John Ks, but same as before, I'm gonna have to uh, let this thing charge up in the room and use the, use the webcam and the laptop again, or my, my little Terminator eyeball, my little toy. Um, this, is, this is cool, this is, this is like way cool. The range isn't that good, but far out. It's just, it's just such a toy. Um, not many uses unless you're, you know, a spy. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I'm, uh, I'm gonna have a coffee. I'm already nervous, but I'm gonna have a coffee. And that's gonna make me all jittery. And then there's the trek down to uh, Janolan, which is about an hour and a half, I think. Um, so yeah, I'll just leave it there and. and uh, There we go, right? <laughs> I'm just back at the entrance to the um, uh, Devil's Coach House, which I showed you before. Um, I wanted to show you this bit, there's some like serious fucking Middle Earth Lord of the Rings spots around here man, like water must actually come out check it out man now if we're lucky <clears throat> over here we'll actually get a glimpse of a real life platypus the platypus, by the way, proves that there is no god. The thing is, what do they call it? Monotreme. Lays eggs like a reptile, suckles its young like a mammal. It has a beak, kind of sensitive beak. It detects things by ultra sensitive feel. Um, electrical charge receptors in its um, skin, the way a shark does to, to, to detect uh, prey. And uh, the males also have a poison claw on their back. You can't even call it a foot. It's a bloody, I don't know, webbed foot like a duck. What the fuck is it? Kill it with fire, stomp on it. Anyway, you always imagine them to be quite large. I mean, I mean, I, you know, I'm, a, I'm an Aussie, I'm Australian. I always thought wombats were small and platypus were like the size of a cat. Um, no. Platypus is like the size of, uh, geez, they're, they're really quite small, like a small ferret. Um, wombats, you think they're kind of small? Um, God, check out how blue it is. Isn't that just crazy? Wombats, quick story. Um, many years ago, when I was here, uh, I used to hang out the back of the kitchen there. Uh, at the time, they were putting in all the lights along the path that goes up, goes up <clears throat> past, along that driveway I was on. Um, and there's a walking track that goes up to one of the caves, I think the Baal Cave, up the back. And whilst I was here, that's when all the renovations were taking place. And they were putting all the lights in. So this is the first time it all been lit up previously, like previous to that, it was like pitch black out there at night time. And I think I just finished service and I popped out the back and I was sitting on, you know, doing the chef thing. 
think you, you I think it's, you're supposed to sit on a milk crate next to a garbage bin. I think that's what you're supposed to do and smoke cigarettes and feel sorry for yourself. And uh, so I'm sitting there and uh, I look up, see something on the path. First thought popped in my head, fuck me a bear, right? Like, fuck a bear. <laughs> Man, there was a Coke machine, broken Coke machine next to me. Man, I almost climbed on top of it. I thought I was gonna poo my pants. Oh fuck a bear! What fuck's a bear doing out here? This one not, not wasn't a bear, it's a wombat. The thing fucking huge man. It's like the size of well the size of a fucking bear. And it's like and uh oh hey this is pretty cool. Get that shit out. Woo. This is the one they were saying that, uh, this must be the one they were saying in, in the you know, days gone by. They actually uh, harnessed this body of water to generate hydroelectricity to power the, the caves. But yeah, there's me. Go oh, fuck, a bear! <laughs> and the thing is, because these wombats, I didn't want to go into it before, but it needs some explanation. These things, and it wasn't Douglas Adams that said they were the bulldozers of the bush, it was Ben Elton. I remember now. Didn't even Google it. How's that? Uh, these things have had no natural predators um, since the dawn of time. Right? So they just don't give a fuck about you. They just don't care. Um, and so I'm sitting there, cigarette in my hand like this, like that. And this thing's just going here, whatever. Just going, uh, just doing like like this, just going, uh, 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 just eating eating shit. Um, there was a few of them around at the time. One sort of would just dig underneath buildings and just just live there for six months because you can't get rid of them. And uh, but I used to have to walk from the kitchen all the way up to the engineer's cottage, pitch black, um, every night. I had like a little LED light sort of thing so I could see where the hell I was going. Limited range. You know, I couldn't see very far. It was enough so I just didn't, you know, do a uh, picnic at hanging rock thing and just fucking disappear and get eaten by Aboriginal spirits or something. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you'd often, I'd often hear uh, just like wallabies and kangaroos and stuff just sort of thumping off into the bushes. I sort of made my way up, uh, up to the uh, engineer's cottage. And uh, well, this one night, I'm walking up, and it's like a, a, a building just up the top of the driveway there, and it's got um, it actually houses the diesel generator for when the place runs out of, because I mean there's only one electricity line that comes out here, and all it takes is a tree to fall down, and that's it, place is cut off with power. So we've got 48 hours worth of uh, diesel backup power generation here. And it's like a, a housing up there, a building. And this wombat decided to just live there. And uh, nobody's gonna argue with it. I'm not kidding. I was walking up one day. And, uh, one night, sorry. And I'm just going, da, 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 da. next thing I know, only a few feet away from me, a big fucking wombat just standing there. And I'm not kidding. Like I, I went, Bleh! like this, Bleh! fuck, wombat. Um, they can run fast, apparently. They're like very dangerous over short distances, like a dwarf. Still thinking Lord of the Rings. Um, and this is what the wombat did to me. Looked directly at me like this and just went. Pshh. It just dissed me. Wombat just looked at me, went, Pshh. like, you're nothing. <laughs> How funny is that? Now I'm seeing, I'm seeing creatures running around here. Ah, yeah. oh, birds. Good, good, good. 
I was afraid it might be the fairy folk. Come to take me babies. Uh, sorry, I don't know what the hell that was. Talking about the um, the wombat before living underneath the, the uh, house, that, uh, the diesel generator house, housing. Oh, that's a bit of a treacherous bridge. Just reminded me of a story. I told you how with the kids they uh, take on the bones and stones to her. They uh, show them creepy things, dead birds, <laughs> bones, old stuff. Uh, they tell them about the. Uh... Oh, I might as well head back. They tell them about you know. They show them some creepy movie down the auditorium. Tell them about the ghost of Mrs. Chisholm in the restaurant. Then they take him to the restaurant, sitting down. Now, when I was here, I uh, we used to get groups in primary school kids, eight years old. Um, we get them like a, a hundred at a pop, a hundred per group. Sometimes they have two groups at a time. This one particular day, it was uh, yeah, two hundred of them. Restaurants full, booked out, and. Uh, we had some storms and some bad weather up here and uh, trees falling down, knocked the power out somewhere between here and Oberon and uh, so we're on a backup diesel. We also had some snow in Oberon. Some of the staff had been snowed in, uh, couldn't actually get here to work. So I had to do breakfast and stuff. Um, only happened once or twice. But uh, here I am. I've got... Uh, 200 of these, these kids staying here and, uh, and they're all in the restaurant spend all day getting everything ready <clears throat> you know their dinner time is about say 6pm uh, everything's ready I'm standing there <clears throat> I've got the teenagers that are working with me already all the kids are settled you know I've sorted everything out with the teachers all good right on uh, now remember they just got all these kids primed, all this creepy stuff. Six o'clock, lights go out. Now the sound. <laughs> 200 eight year olds going, ah! Ah! <laughs> Man, they didn't have anything like it in my life. <laughs> it's hard to imagine. And uh, yeah, so bang, lights go out. Luckily, the food was hot. And we could get it out to them without any dramas, but uh, yeah, <laughs> man, I felt felt so sorry for the teachers. I thought it was hilarious. I had a guy up from Sydney helping me uh, just for a couple of days, and uh, <laughs> he was standing next to me in the kitchen. Bang, lights go out. Two hundred screaming eight-year-olds. Ah, ah, fuck it, ah. <laughs> fuck it, ah. He just looked at me. He's gone. What the fuck have you got me into? <laughs> oh man, never, <laughs> never heard anything like it in my life. It's a, it's a karma story. Because many years ago, I was one of those eight-year-olds, and uh, and uh, I was the eight-year-old who opened the salt and pepper shakers and then filled them full of gravy and vegetables. Yeah, that was me. I had to apologise to the chef. I got into big trouble. And the chef sort of come out and gone, oh, you know, that's, uh, that's just uh, not on. That's uh, putting the gravy in the pepper shakers. Oh, geez, that's just something you really shouldn't be doing. I was like, oh, shit, sorry. I only did it because I could. It's a mate. And so, man, did I pay for it. 30 years later, I'm the chef. And there's 200 of them out there going, ah, fucking ah. <laughs> oh man, oh, I, just, I just had to share that with you, that's just like the funniest thing ever, and uh, anyway, cool.